Come on, church, sing it. You have never felt any better Whoa. You have never felt any better Jesus, you've never felt you. Won't you tell him this morning, come on, lift your voice, sing it out. You have never
Yeah, come on, man. Give the Lord a hand. How many of you know he loves you this morning, huh? You can be seated, man. Look at your neighbor and say, you even sound good this morning. Yeah, you sound good this morning. It is so great to see you. I'm glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord, aren't you? So if you're our first time guest online or here at G5, welcome. We're so glad you made it. And I got to tell you, online, you got to hear me. It is, I know it's awesome. You tell me about it. And we now, through this kind of pandemic, we've had people gathering in houses. It's just kind of been organically growing, kind of like the book of Acts. And people are getting people together and they're inviting people. They're inviting people that are not saved. They're inviting people who've never been to church. They're coming to their house and they're eating afterwards like we do because G5 likes to eat. And um, my brother heard the voice of God and brought me a buddy finger. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm so excited. So I'm going to preach a little faster this morning because I know you're not supposed to eat that much sugar in the morning, but I couldn't help myself. I just said, <laughs> me and a butterfinger, we're going to get along. I'm in a series right now or in a compilation on uh, the seven words that Jesus spoke from the cross. How many of you know the last words that someone speak is pretty powerful, huh? And from the cross, Jesus spoke these words. Now, he may have not said some of these words, like the one we're going to talk about today. Emphatically, this is what he said, but he said it. Do you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have ever said something that you didn't say, but you said it anyhow? Do you know what I'm talking about? Only the really super fast will get what I just said right there. Some of you are so good at saying something, but you're not really saying it, but you're saying it. How many of you are married to somebody like that? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. So from the cross, Jesus said these words. Tuesday nights, we talked about forgiveness. And Jesus from the cross says, I forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Forgiveness. If the world today could feel and experience forgiveness how many of you know so many more of us would be willing to forgive? It's hard to forgive others when you have not yet felt in your soul that I've been forgiven. And so as we look today, I want to talk to you about the word assurance. Assurance. Have you ever in your life ever needed to be assured? Have you ever needed somebody just to say, it's going to be okay? Have you ever needed someone or something in your life for somebody to say, it's going to be all right? I've read the end of the book. We win. Just hang in there. How many of you know if you ever watch a movie, right, right now my wife's got me watching Hallmark with her. And I've seen most of these movies through her eyes at least 65 times. But she watches it like she's never seen it before. I'm like, I know what's going to happen right here. And even when, how many of you know when it gets a little traumatic and it gets a little like nerve wracking and a little anxious, some of you are going like, nah, I got this, right? It's kind of like watching a football game that you wanted somebody to win and you know they win when you're watching the replay. How many of you know you're not near as nervous? So we've got this book called the Bible that if we read it, you can live every day in your life assured that God is on the throne and he holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And there's nothing too big for him to do. God can do anything, you know. He can make something out of nothing. Some of us today need God to make something out of nothing. Do you know what I'm talking about? We've got finances we need. We've got something in our body we need. We've got something in our relationship. We've got something in our lives that we need this. So there are these two thieves that are hanging on the cross with Jesus as he's dying. And he's in between them. And he hears these words of Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. These two thieves listen. And as you begin to read in Luke 23, one of the criminals hanging beside Jesus hurled insults at Jesus. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself. Oh, I could preach for two hours right here. Because some of you have people in your life that are saying, if you're so godly and if your God is so good, then why doesn't he save you? Which you get to look at him and smile really big and say, well, I don't know if you know it or not, but it's not what it looks like. 
I know it looks like I'm drowning, but actually I've got a life preserver and God is holding me up. And he's about to get credit and glory and honor for something that you and I cannot take any credit for. If you're in a situation today where your unsaved friends and some even your Christians are looking at you going, oh, so he's there. Some of us today, we don't even know who we are. We don't even know what our gift is. We don't know what our calling is. We don't know that God is for us. And these two thieves are there. And one is hurling insults at the person that could save his life. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. <laughs> it's almost like I know who you are, but I don't think you'll ever forgive me. But if you're gonna save yourself, if you're gonna do something, will you just include me? You ever had anybody in your life that they didn't want to suffer with you, they didn't want to work with you, but they wanted the reward? Can I get an amen? amen. Huh? So you can see what's going on in their lives. And the other re criminal rebuked him. Could you imagine? Here's Jesus. This is ugly. This is bloody. It's gory. I don't even want to go into it. One thief is cursing. And the other thief is rebuking the guy that's cursing. Wow. We deserve to die for our evil deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today, you will be with me in paradise. The power of together. I'm going to preach a message on together. I talked to the team about it last night. But there's a message in there, and it's coming out right now. I want to let you know that. I was reading this week all the times in life where people said at the last second they were saved. I read about somebody that was in their boat and, and, and a storm was coming and they were about to drain it and at the last second, somebody saved them. I, I read this week about somebody that was, uh, man, their job was about lost and at the last second, a miracle happened and something stepped in. In this scripture, you're about to read the fastest salvation ever recorded in the history of mankind. In the last seconds of his life, where he's bleeding, he's guilty, he's done. He's going, Father, remember me. Woo, can we talk? Well, why are you so emotional about this, Tim? Because grace moves me. When God gives you what you don't deserve, how many of you know that's a pretty powerful thing? So when you are forgiven, you're forgiven. And with what forgiveness you've been given, you need to give it to others. Now we need to walk in this assurance. This assurance. I don't ever want you ever again to doubt that you're going to heaven. Do you hear me? So I'm asking you to listen to me for the next few minutes as if your life depends on it. Because it does. The last time I checked, in humanity... None of us get out of here alive. I'm not trying to be bleak. I'm just telling you, all of us got an expiration date on it. Does that make you feel good? <laughs> as beautiful as you are, you're going to decay. I look at the mirror every day and say to my wife, honey, this is going to be a sad day when this decays. Oh, I, I meant her. I mean, it's a sad day when you decay. That's why in life, if you're going to be really successful and really live, you can't hold too tightly to the things of this earth. Some of us want talent. Some of us want possessions. How many of you know you don't really own anything ever? Oh, I own a house. Oh, yeah, stop paying taxes on it. They'll come and get that bad boy. 
I think Benjamin Franklin said there's only two things, death and taxes. Can I tell you? I think it's only death. And I'm not trying to be morbid. What I do want to let you know, this guy that is hanging on the cross, how many of you know he was not a theologian? How many of you know he had never read the four spiritual laws? How many of you know he had never seen the Romans road to salvation? Matter of fact, can we talk about it in a minute? This really messes with a lot of religious theologians on the planet because they have all these words that you're supposed to know. Perpetuation. Oh yeah, these big words. Now am I against these words? No, I'm not against these words, but what I am against is us as the body of Christ to ever make people believe that you gotta know all these words and say all these fancy riddles to get God to have you in your life. He simply said, will you remember me? Will you remember me? What was he saying when he said, will you remember me? Can we talk about it? He was saying so much more than you, will you remember me? He was saying from the cross, God, I know that after I leave this planet, I'm going to face God. I'm hanging behind, beside his son right now, but I'm about to meet the God of the universe. I came to tell you this morning, church, every one of us have a date that we're gonna stand before God. And right now the church is so busy telling people what it wants to hear, but that's not gonna get you ready to stand before the God of the universe who made you, who's making your heart beat, who's giving you breath right now. Folks, we need to right now understand we cannot save ourselves, but we are about to face God. The reason that people treat God so casually and they go through life ignoring God while they live their own lives instead of God's plan it's because somewhere in their life they believe and bought the lie that you know what? That when you're dead, it's over. I cannot imagine being an atheist believing there is no God. How do you face eternity? I want you to realize this. The person sitting beside you right now is eternal. Their choice will decide whether they spend eternity with Jesus or without him. The Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, everyone must die once and after that be judged by God. That is the appointment in your life and in my life that we will not be late for. You won't go, hey, 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 hey can, can I set it back 15 minutes? No, no, you, you'll be there. You'll be there and I will be there. I, I, I'm reading these statistics and as I look at America right now, the mortality rate is exactly 100%. <laughs> I just want you to know, after this, it's not, oh, I'm going to be in the abyss. No, you're going to be in heaven and you're either going to be in a place called hell. Oh, Tim, you're so mean. No, I'm just, that's the Bible. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling it the way he told it. And I want to tell you, I don't ever want my children to look at me from hell and say to me, Daddy, why did you not tell me about heaven? Why did you not tell me, Daddy, that I could live with Jesus forever? Oh, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> if you love Jesus, you're going to love his church. And nobody's going to have to beg you. You'll be the first out. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And it's not going to be a drudgery, and it's not going to be a bunch of legalism. It's going to be by his grace we have been saved. And because we have been saved and because we walk in his forgiveness, and Tuesday night we'll talk about love. Because I walk in love, I gladly serve him and give him my life. Tithing and giving is really about love. It's not about duty. 
Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. The second thing, are we okay, church? Are we okay? This won't have you shouting in a minute. We'll shout. But right now, this is probably going to have us going, ooh, he tightened us up right here, right now. (laughs) The second thing this thief that was dying somehow knew is that he had sinned against God. He admits to him, I've sinned. He says to everybody around him, From the cross, he's talking to this other thief. But he says to everyone around him, including Jesus, I have sinned. I have done wrong. This man has done nothing wrong. There is something unique about this man. He's not like you and I, buddy. We deserve to be on these crosses. We did these evil deeds. He did nothing except irritate the religious people of their day. We know because in verse 41, he says, we deserve to die for our evil deeds. This is called confession. Confession. Romans said that your salvation actually comes not when you ask for forgiveness, but when you confess, I am now a child of God. Are you with me? Does this bother us a little bit? I hope so. I want you to know that your confession is when you say, I have asked Jesus to forgive me and I'm now a child of God. If you ever see me walking around celebration, that's where I live, I'm probably walking down the street saying, I am a child of God. I've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. The old man passed away and behold, a brand new man came forth. I am now going to walk in his power and his wisdom and he is sanctifying me daily. That should be your confession. What do you say when you're with self? Do you tell God everything wrong in your life and God, you've given me a raw deal and are we cursing him instead of praising him? Well, God, I had a bad week. You gave me a great week last week. Now, now this week I'm sucking wind and that's your fault. And Lord, just look around. Look at the people starving. Look at the tensions in our world. Look at the bad leadership. Look at everything. God, if there was a God, isn't it amazing church how we want to blame God for all the junk in this world? And God is the answer. In the Bible, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of our wrong. You do the confessing, Jesus says, and I'll do the forgiving. If you will come to him today and say, I've sinned. See, some of you, you've you've come to church, you've asked Jesus in your life, but because you can't live perfect, you're going, I ain't going back to church. Because I'm going to go in there and feel guilty. Let me tell you, God never calls any human being to feel guilt. He'll make you feel conviction, but he'll never make you feel guilt. Why? Because he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God. He took on him the guilt. So when you keep reminding each other of each other's past, God's weighing in on the conversation and going, I have no idea. If you've asked me to forgive you, I've cleansed you, and I don't even know what happened. Come on, church, that's really, really great news. But don't we get in this thing of, well, who has the worst sins? <laughs> right? Well, I just want you to know, compared to you, I'm not really that bad. <laughs> and compared to Hitler, <laughs> I am the bomb.com. I mean, don't we? We, we look at people and we, we grade sin. And Jesus said, as soon as you told a lie, you're as lost as Hitler was. We could not save ourselves. And every one of us in this week, if we said, I don't sin, the Bible says, the truth of God does not live in us. Oh, okay. It'll get better, I promise. You see, here's the question. Is anybody good enough? Is anybody perfect enough? Is anybody one person that can measure up? Nobody bought bats a thousand. And I want you to know that heaven's a perfect place. And the only way that you can stand before God is to confess that I'm not perfect. And I need you to forgive me. And I need you to remember me. Remember me. 
I know you know this, that all of us, when we sin against God, we deserve to die. And Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You don't have to be perfect. And I've got some really great news for some of us in the room. Church online, I've got some great news for you. God nowhere in Scripture ever asked you to live the Christian life. He asked you to surrender your heart and let him live his life through you. Let him, his nature, let him sanctify you. Let him fill you. The third thing is that he knew that Jesus was more than a man. He knew that Jesus was more than a man. We deserve to die for our evil deeds, but this man, this man, this man, has not done anything wrong. This man has not done anything wrong. Notice that. He doesn't say this man has done as much stuff as we have. He doesn't say we've done more bad stuff than this guy. He doesn't say this guy is full of good works and he's done much greater works than we have. He doesn't say any of that. He just said this man has never done anything wrong. He knew that this was more than a man. This was the sinless son of God. This was God's own son. I will never forget all these globalists met one time and they were talking about the great things that they're doing in the earth. And so one stood up and said, well, I just want to let you know that we have cured all pandemics and, and, and we don't have any of that. Another one stood up and said, oh, well, let me tell you what. We've solved world hunger. We don't have any hunger in our country. Another one stood up and said, well, we've achieved complete peace. There's no war. There's no battle. And then finally, a man stood up and said, well, I just want to let you know, because he wanted up there, one up everybody. He said, I just want you to know the God of the universe sent his son to our world. And they all said, well, what did you do? Did you crown him king of kings? Did you worship him? Did you love him? To which he said, no, we crucified him. Ladies and gentlemen, he was more than a man. But he suffered and knows the pain and the hurt that you and I have in our lives. Because he had never done anything wrong, this thief knew he was more than a man. He's more than a man. This morning, do you know that he's more than a good man. He's more than a prophet. He's more than a religious leader. He is more than an icon. He is the sinless son of God. And we bow before him. And when you come to G5 now, we're decorating for his birthday. We're celebrating his birthday. You may think these trees and things represent gifts, and if you got a butterfinger, I'm fired up about it. But can I tell you, <laughs> it represents the King of kings and the Lord of lords sent his son to this earth, and he died. But on the third day, thank God, he arose. And the Bible says the same power that raised his dead body from the grave lives in you to destroy every chain, to destroy every yoke, to destroy every disease, to destroy every addiction, to destroy every ounce of unforgiveness. His power lives in you mightily. Come on, businessmen. When you walk in this week, you're not walking alone. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is with you. His hand is on you. He has anointed you to preach the gospel, to bind up the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. What are you doing this week? Well, I'm just going to try to sell something. I'm going to try to get one more. I'm going to work 24-7 for it to happen. You're a fool. I know that's strong, but you are called by the God of the universe to be his disciple. 
and to share his gospel and his love. And he's going to bless you. The Bible says he's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. That means people that don't even like you are going to bless you. Are you all right with that? Come on, church. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is saying to you whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And I'm going to bless you with abundant life. But here's what I can tell you. If the blessing is more important than the blesser, we're out of whack. And that's the problem. We leave the Bible, read the Bible to find out what I can get from God. When we should say, God, you've already given me everything. Now I give back to you. This has got to be the shortest salvation prayer ever, ever prayed. This is going to irritate some of us. But here was his prayer. Just remember me. Just remember me. There's not a parent in this room that your children who have not fully got their full vocabulary together has not come to you. Some of you women around here blow my mind. Your kids can say, ta ta ti ta ta and they'll go, honey, he wants his pacifier. I'll be like, you got the gift of tongues and interpretation. You moms and dads amaze me. Just a groan. Oh, 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 no, he's hungry. Is it too big to believe that when you and I cry out to God, help? You don't think that's a powerful prayer? Come on. You're trying to say all the right words. And Jesus is looking at your heart going, what do you want? I know who you are. I know where you're going. Just remember me. Lord, I've got a son that doesn't know you. Just remember him. My husband is not walking with God right now. Just remember him. Lord, I've got family members that don't know Christ. Remember them. This is such a powerful, powerful prayer. That's all he says is remember them. You got to remember this man had wasted his life. This man had lived his life for himself. This man had lived his life completely in evil. And in the last few seconds of his life, he prays, remember me. As a pastor, I have a lot of people come to me and they go, will you just please give me comfort because someone I love was taken very quickly and I don't know if they ever prayed a prayer. And I'm gonna tell you this this morning with 100% accuracy. I always believe that people, before they meet their maker, have a moment to say, remember me. Remember me. Remember me. This guy said, remember me. It's not a theologian's approach. He doesn't use words like atonement or perpetuation or justification or redemption. He never even mentions the words, I confess. He never says, I believe. He never says, I repent. He never says, I trust. He never says, I receive. But Jesus says, today... You and I, we're going to hang together. We're going to be together because who's your daddy? You ask the right man at the right time to remember you. And you're forgiven. Remember me. Now, can I tell you, that may not be an acceptable prayer for theologians, but it was good enough for Jesus. And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Can you say the word assurance? Assurance. When I was a little kid, we used to sing this song. I'll tell you how old I am. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purpose of love.
born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. See, it irritates us. As this dude wasted his whole life, and in his last seconds of his life, he prays this prayer, remember me. And Jesus, in his love and in his mercy and in his grace, goes, I get it. I get it. I forgive you. I've been so blessed, 180 countries, watching people around the world come to know Jesus. And one of the most amazing things is I work closely with Wycliffe Bible translators, and I got to speak to their missionaries and got to hang with them and love them and train them. And uh, one day they were telling me this story in this little village of about 60 people. This man spent six years trying to build a church and get somebody saved and nobody would come to know Jesus and one day he went and visited this man that was in the hospital he'd had a stroke and a heart issue and he he walked in and he just said uh, I, I just wanted to ask you are you saved and the only thing the guy would say was sigh S-I S-I he left and he came back later and the whole village had come to know Christ and they had a thriving little church growing there. And he come to find out that the word sigh meant saved in their language. Let me tell you, God will meet you where you are. And he will speak the language that you need to hear. His love is so overwhelming. When I was a boy, I used to go to these gospel concerts and there's this group called the Orrells. You don't even know them. But they used to sing this song that they had written, Tears Are a Language That God Understands. Oft times I wonder why tears come into my eyes. Boy, as a little boy, it meant the world to me to know moms and dads, men, women, that some days when I didn't have the words, some days my heart was so heavy, some days it was so overwhelming that I could just come to him and that tears were a language that he could understand. Can I tell you, you can be assured today beyond a shadow of a doubt that the God of the universe and his son through the power of his Holy Spirit is communicating to you and he's telling you it's gonna be all right. He's telling you your best days are ahead of you. He's telling you I have forgiven you. He is telling you you can have an assurance that when you leave this planet, your home is in heaven. Oh, come on, we're rich. We're rich beyond measure. Uh, you see, you and I, when we start to understand the gospel, we understand that Jesus was saying to you and I, people can't see the inward part of your heart when you make a decision, but you can make a decision to have an outward expression, and it's called baptism. And at G5 Church, we don't have a fancy baptismal I'm not against those. You rich people, I'm happy you got them. We got a trough that we bought at Farm and Fleet, and it's beautiful. And we wrote G5 on the side of it. And my buddy Mike's got on the T-shirt, it says forgiven. And on the back, it says, I got dunked. We use a little bit different language here, but how many of you know God's not concerned about all your fancy language? He wants to know, did you show the world that I was lost? And now I'm found. The old life went under and the new life came forth. Amen. You and I get this unbelievable pri privilege to do this. The baptism does not make you a, a believer. It shows that you are one. I know so many people that believe, well, if I just get baptized, then God's going to... No. The only way you can ever accept Jesus is by simply saying, 
remember me. Forgive me. I want to live for you. Baptism will not save you. But it is a further obedience on your part that says, I am now going to say to the world that I am now a Christian. It's kind of like a wedding ring. I I just had the privilege to do another wedding here. And I don't do that many because I don't have time. But I always remember the part of the wedding ring where I show the rings and it's an endless circle. And can I tell you, the wedding ring doesn't make me married, but it does show that I am married. When you make a new commitment in your heart and you make a commitment to your wife, this ring is the symbol that my love is unending for you. And this is a covenant and not a contract the power of an outward expression. Five and I close. There's one more thing this guy knew. knew, And he believed the message of Jesus. He believed the message of Jesus. You see, people believe they can come to God anytime they want to. But if you understand the scripture, the Bible says, and yet, and let his spirit, unless his spirit draws you, You can't know him. That's why if the voice of Jesus ever comes to you and says, surrender your life, give me your life, for God's sake, do it. Do it. I know you won't understand it all. I know you won't have it all figured out. I know you won't uh, be able to go, oh, I can quote all this. Don't. Just accept him and get on the road to letting him grow you and build you his love and his life into you. The Bible says in Acts 16, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. How do I know that when I die, I get to go to heaven? What is my assurance? How can I be certain? How can I eliminate all the doubts in my mind? The assurance of your salvation is not in your works because you can't earn your salvation. Your assurance of salvation is not by feelings because how many of you know feelings come and go? Matter of fact, one of the marks of a mature Christian is feelings leave. Well, I just don't feel. My daddy was a little rough and uh, he cared about my feelings, but he didn't care that much about them. He said, son, I want you to do the right thing whether you feel like it or not. Yeah, but dad, I don't feel like going to school. Son, I don't feel like going to work but I'm going to work and you're going to school. you got to get past your feelings. Well, I don't feel like forgiving. I don't feel like I've been forgiven. Would you agree with me at least that feelings come and go? Sometimes I feel like a Christian, sometimes I don't. About a third day on our honeymoon, 30 years ago coming up, I looked over at my beautiful wife. I never said anything to her, but I looked at her and went, I don't feel married. As a matter of fact, at dinner, I think I did look at her. Tim, it wasn't smart, but I said to her, you know, honey, I don't feel married. She said, big boy, you're married. (laughs) Some of you today are going, well, I don't feel like a Christian. And Jesus is saying, big boy, you're a Christian. Feelings come and go. What is your your assurance? If God says it, that settles it. If God says it, that settles it. Jesus replied to this man and said, remember, that said, remember me. And Jesus said, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. If you will trust him, you will be with him. And by the way, you'll not only be in heaven, but he'll give you some heaven to go to heaven in. See, if you've got breath in your body, God's not done with you. We are so committed. We're setting up these classes. We're doing all these things here so that you can get into your destiny, so that you can know your gift. How can I know this? Today you'll be with me in paradise. Let me just give you this and I close. First of all, he says today. He says right now it's immediate. It's immediate. Christ saves you right now. The second thing is, as he says, today you will, you will. He says it's for sure. Today you will be with me in paradise. 
This is so important to your Christian faith. The third is, is because he says you have a relationship with God Almighty. Jesus Christ and Christianity is not about a bunch of laws and regulation. It is about a relationship with God's own Son. And understanding the Trinity, understanding God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that's a lot, isn't it? But these three are one. And because of that unity, because of that edification, because of that honor of authority, and that honor of order, and that honor that was put in that, the Bible says that all things can be made new and that you can be filled with His Spirit. Imagine if Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit would fight each other and say bad things to each other. And yet, what do we do, saints? God help us. So it's a relationship. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Isn't this incredible? It's a relationship. You can have assurance. You can absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's done. These seven words. Tuesday night, I will either be talking about substitution or love. Next Sunday, I will either be talking about love or substitution. <laughs> You're going to have to show up to find out. Now, I want to just tell you, if you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life and you want the privilege, somebody somewhere in the world today tuned in just so that right now you could pray this prayer. Remember me. Would you stand to your feet? And if you feel comfortable, I love as a family for all of us just to pray this prayer together. If you've never asked him to be Lord of your life, if you've never stepped into his destiny, would you just say this prayer with me right now? Dear Jesus, I'm lost. I can't save myself. Thank God you saved me. I repent. I accept you as my Lord and Master. Forgive me of my sin. I confess it. I am now a Christian. In Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand? Give the Lord a hand. I just sensed this morning as I was over there worshiping that uh, there were people watching today and there were people that were here in this room that just needed a little extra assurance that God's hand is on you and that he's close. Not only the assurance in your salvation, but the assurance that his hand is on you and that he's going to bless you, that his plans for you are for good and not evil. And his plan is to guide you and build you and help you get into your destiny. I say it often here. God's not not hiding stuff from you. He's hiding stuff for you. But you have to seek it. If you want God to just fill your heart with assurance over your children, over your family, over your marriage, some of you, you've been thinking about getting married for so long. Can I just tell you, jump in. Jump in. Jump in. I got a book. I can do a hundred at a time. If you've never been baptized, let us get your body dunked. Can we do it? All right. If you want God to just move in your heart, will you raise your hands? I want him to move in mine. Oh, Lord, it's so wonderful to know that we don't have to fix ourselves up and we don't have to become righteous, that you made us righteous. And right now, I just pray that the Spirit of God would encourage every heart. There are people that are going through trials and tests. Lord, we don't want to be light or fickle. We want people to know how much you love them and that we want to lift them and we want to help them carry their load. I pray for every mom in this room. I pray you'll give her strength and patience and strength. I pray for every man that you will give him fresh vision and hunger for you. I pray, Lord, that you will open this week doors of opportunity that will blow our minds, surprise us. I pray for every young person under the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that you will give them a sense of identity, that they know they're loved and that they're your child. 
I pray for every single lady in this room that she has dreams and she wants to be loved and she, she wants to be cherished. And Lord, I just pray that you'll help her never to sell herself short. Let her feel your love and acceptance and that your plans are way big. For every man, Lord, that we're a little nervous about making that deep commitment. We feel like we're in over our head, God, just in life and relationships. Thank you for just giving us the assurance. For somebody, Lord, that is believing you for a miracle in their money and in their, their bodies, I pray right now that the assurance of God would fill them. If you receive that, will you just say, I receive that? In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said amen. Come on, let's do it. Say your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. up on us. God, that we have assurance that we can find ourselves in you. And God, we just thank you for giving us this opportunity to come into your presence and to worship you and learn more about you, Jesus. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you've chosen us, that you've never forsaken us, God. God, we thank you that your love is always strong and it never changes. And it's steadfast in our lives, Jesus. God, we give you all the praise, all the honor this morning. In Jesus' name, come on, the church said, amen, amen. Come on, give it up. Amen, amen. Did you have a good morning, G5? Come on, make some noise for Jesus this morning. Amen. We're so honored that you joined us this morning. Um, we got a few announcements. We got some really cool announcements to talk about for our Christmas season coming up. So we hope you guys will just stay a few minutes and listen to that. But um, just a few things. Um, we would love if you said yes to Jesus this morning. First, congratulations. Come on, give it up for that. Best yes you can ever say, amen. But if you said yes to Jesus, we would love for you to fill out this decisions card because the best thing you can do when you do say yes to Jesus is to go tell somebody and um, share the news that you did give your life to Jesus. So we'd love for you to fill this out at our Connect table right out in the breezeway. We would love for you to do that. You can also, if you want to be baptized, you can check that as well. And actually an announcement that December, shoot, 6th, thank you, December 6th or 8th, I'm sorry. Is it 6th, 8th? You know what? It's the first Sunday of December, and that's what we're going to go with. Amen. Uh, the first Sunday of December, we're having baptism Sunday. So you actually sign up at g5church.com. It's probably the 6th, isn't it? 
It's the six. Whoops, I created this slide too. Hey! Um, but anyway, on December 6th, don't look at that, um, we're having baptism Sunday, so you guys can sign up at g5church.com, and you guys can get dunked at G5, and you're going to love it, so that's going to be awesome. Um, if it's your first time at G5, we do want to say welcome home. We hope you, that you know that you can belong before you know how to behave. Thank you, Jesus. But if you want to fill out one of these Connect cards, we would love for you to do that. Not for us to bother you, but just for us to stay in contact with you. Let, uh, we just want to know that we want you to know that you matter to us and that we care so much. And if you ever need us, we're here for you. And so we would love for you to fill this out and just stay connected with us. Um, if you did give your life to Jesus this morning, we have this book for you. It's called Your New Life, and it's going to be right out of Connect Table, just available for you to grab and just walk out these next few steps with Jesus because it is a beautiful journey, but a journey that we do need help on and guidance on. So we would love to walk that with you and talk that out with you. So make sure you grab one of those. We have this thing called a kindness campaign at G5. It's pretty, pretty cool. And um, what this is, is it's a card that we get to share during our week, just out while we're about. And it's a really great way for us to get the kindness that is at G5 Church out of these four walls. And so um, we just encourage you to pick up some of these cards and put them in your pocket or your purse and make sure you have them wherever you go. And um, just start blessing people during your week and making sure you're giving them this after the blessing. So if you buy someone's food or if you help someone to their car, or if you give a waitress a tip or whatever, however you see fit to bless somebody, just make sure you give them one of these. And it says, you matter to us. G5 is thinking about you. So is Jesus. Come and see us. So this is a really great way to share the gospel um, just by the act of kindness. Amen. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so the Christmas season is coming up, and it's really, really exciting. So December 8th, I'm pretty sure that is a Tuesday. Am I right? Amen. Um, December 8th is our Christmas celebration, you guys. Come on, give it up for that. Mama G's really excited, but she's got her Christmas tree lighting that she's very excited about. So you guys do not want to miss that. We are going to have a sleigh ride, music, food, and more, and a couple other announcements coming during these couple weeks that are going to be happening about that. But make sure you guys invite people. This is a beautiful way for to invite people to church who wouldn't come to church but they would come to a Christmas celebration for, I mean, there's gonna be food, so typically everybody's like, I'm there. Um, free food. But um, it's just a great for, for us to invite our friends and our family and maybe our neighbors or just people in our community that wouldn't necessarily walk into a church, but they would come to a celebration just to get um, a night out with the family, especially right now with not a lot of things going on. This is a great way for us to reach out and do that. Um, I'm really excited about this, Christmas Under the Stars. Um, December 19th, that's a Saturday night at 7 p.m. And we're going to be outside having a beautiful night at G5 Ranch, Christmas Under the Stars. You do not want to miss it. The Nativity Story, we're going to sing some Christmas carols. I mean, y'all, come on. I say a word here, but that's going to be super feely, and it's just going to be incredible. So um, make sure you don't miss that. And then also, just a reminder, we do have baptisms on the 6th, so make sure you sign up for that if you guys want to get dunked. And there's lots more to come. We're going to tell you all more details about everything, but we just wanted you guys to know and start inviting people to the Christmas season at G5 Church. Amen. Is that cool? Okay, well, I got a question for everybody. G5 likes to do what? We like to eat, amen. So we're going to go out and eat, get some food. I'm going to bless it, and then we're going to be released. So Jesus, we just thank you for today. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for this food that has been prepared, Jesus. We just ask you bless it and anoint it to our bodies, God. God, we thank you for just these moments that we get to fellowship together, God. God, I just pray that you would be so evident in our conversations, God, and the way we love on each other. God, I thank you for um, our ride home or wherever headed next, Jesus, that you always guide us and protect us. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, the church said, I love you, G5. I will see you Tuesday. Have an incredible Sunday.